applied my Altra sunscreen in the car before before coming coming in. And um, you know, I don't have any problem putting that around my eyes whatsoever. But so many of you um, report in the comments that you get a lot of stinging when you put sunscreen around the eyes. And do I have any tips or recommendations for that? I mean, honestly, the least irritating sunscreen out there is non-nano size zinc titanium dioxide for around the eyes. Um, but it leaves such a significant cast. Personally, I don't ever experience the stinging with most chemical sunscreens. More often than not, uh, a lot of times the stinging is a result of um, some of the inactive ingredients. If there's fragrance that can cause stinging, um, you know, a variety of things. But I do close my eyes when I put it on, so I never end up getting it in my eyes. Hey there. Hello. So I don't have a problem putting it around my eyes, but this morning, though, um, sunscreen notage aside, I washed my face with the L Luna Foreo Fofo. Um, <laughs> I'm going to review it for you guys if the video is not up already, but <laughs> that thing is kind of fun. But it makes my nose itch, the Fofo. Because it, it vibrates and it, it makes my, my nose run a little bit because it probably um, stimulates one of my uh, little uh, nerves in my nose to cause my nose to, to run a little oh, bit. Like when you go to the dentist. Yeah, you exactly, it? exactly. Like putting a tuning fork on your, your head because bone transmits vibratory stimuli, stimuli oh. and you can hear it you can, you know, in your nose. That thing is interesting. Tell me again what it's called. It's called the Luna Foreo Fofo. Luna I never Foreo. ever would have purchased that on my own. I only got it in the FabFitFun box. But as you'll see from the review video, <laughs> I don't hate it. It's kind of fun. Um, Did you say they have a toothbrush line too? That's what I want to try is the toothbrush. I'm more motivated by the toothbrush and the facial thing because I'm not really a face scrubber, but I'm a but I'm an enamel annihilator with my because you get yeah. lost in thought brushing your teeth and when you do your um, video review are you going to show it actually yeah yeah oh, okay. yeah because yeah, i'm interested to see yeah how it, how it functions you're wearing a very upf uh, friendly jacket here with denim Denim is very, uh, very UV protective. Oh, UV, I thought yeah. you said UPS. UPF, UPF, Universal Protective Factor. Yeah, I wonder, it would be great. Too bad we, we can't put a, do some photo, photo testing and pit your, your, is that a Target denim, or that's your, your uh, Stitch Fix, you got that? Yeah, I think it's Britannia. Stitch Fix, Stitch Fix, Stitch Fix, got it, so, that's a mouthful. Denim versus uh, my Cooley Bar cardigan, see who wins. But if your Stitch Fix, <laughs> if your Stitch Fix cardigan um, denim thing wins, and Cooley Bar does not demonstrate UPS 50, then I get my money back. I'm not sure how their lifetime guarantee works on their clothing. You know, they have a lifetime guarantee of the UPF, but it's not like consumers have the resources to go out and, and second test their, their clothing a year or two years later. Now, so it's kind of an empty test? promise. Do you put your arm in the sun? You need, you need a, a, a spectrophotometer. Oh. You know, I mean, people don't have that or, you know, the equipment and everything in their homes. So you'd have to independently test it. So it's kind of an empty promise, you know. It's like, Maybe they have some sort of a program where you can mail it back. Test but you see, stuff. how would you prove that, that it, I mean, unless you got a sunburn, that'd be one way. I, I don't if you know burn it through works. it. It'd be interesting to find out though. Yeah. Policies No, they're not, like most marketing, it's not transparent whatsoever. Well, you're not supposed to question it. <laughs> no, you're just supposed to consume, buy, 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 buy. <laughs> I have been really happy with the quality of their clothing. Um, so, I mean, I like the clothes. <laughs> I've got my little hat right here. Yeah, you like your hat. Yeah, this one's handy because yeah. it, it folds right up, but it doesn't wrinkle on Yeah. So, I'm going to have this about a year now, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people want me to compare different brands of Cooley Bar, uh, of this UPF fabric. Clothing, but I don't have the spectra. You know, it's not like I can do U UPF testing. 
Um, it, it is what it is. There's no need to compare. You, you can, it, it's all about your personal fashion aesthetics, I guess, and what you want. It doesn't say what the UPF is on here. All of their stuff is UPF 50. Oh, it's all 50? Yeah. They claim. Oh, we have to trust them. <laughs> Why would they lie to us? I know. Well, they do. The thing about Cooley Bar is that they, they comply with the Australian guidelines for, um, for UPF. See, Australia has guidelines that manufacturers have to adhere to that are pretty strict. In the United States, we don't have that. Like, similarly, we don't have those mandatory gui mandatory um, regular mandatory um, guidelines for our sunglasses. Whereas in Australia, they do, and also Europe. You know, they are required. Their sunglasses are required. It's it's almost better to buy European or Australian sunglasses than American sunglasses. I mean, I would just have more confidence in them based on just the standards that they have there. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it all comes from the same ego in the sky. Yeah, whatever. You know. But, oh, yesterday we went to, last night we went to Target. I got the B in my bonnet to go to Target. You got some stickers. Yeah, I did. I'll show you all. I got some planner stickers in the dollar spot. Um, or what's it called now? The bullseye spot? Yeah, because there are a lot of things that are not a dollar. Yeah, anymore. yeah, my stickers were three dollars, which is fine. Um, but yeah, yeah, nice. It's a bullseye something. I get so overwhelmed with Target. I just love doing a purple theme in my Whole Foods um, little breakfast, Sunday breakfast bowl. I got the purple carrots. You know, they were labeling this as radish, but I think they meant radicchio, right? I'm, I'm, yeah, that's not radish. Yeah, they said ra it's labeled as radish, but um, whatever. I'll forgive you Whole Foods for not saying that correctly. I have some dried blueberries, cauliflower, spiralized beets. At the bottom is a, a little bit of the tofu scramble, and then those are the dried blueberries, and I also have some black sesame seed seaweed flake shake. <laughs> So that's what I'm having. And what did you get? I stuck with all veggies this morning. I started with that tempeh curry. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then went up from there. These are the uh, carrots. Yeah, the shredded brain. Yeah, they look really yeah, good, right. don't they? Yeah, yeah. And then my usual falafel. Your falafel. <laughs> How's the coffee this morning? It's good. Yeah. It's yeah, much the, needed the barista here, um, since we've been coming here, they, they got a new barista, what, maybe six months ago, and she's superior, yeah, superior she to the previous one. She does a great job. <laughs> yeah, she's very good. She doesn't make small talk either, which I appreciate. She just gets to work. Well, she's got to focus on it. Correct, yeah. We, we were lucky mm -hmm. this morning, though, it's not too crowded. The other one was too, too friendly. Like, I haven't had my coffee yet. Stop trying to make small yeah. talk. It's not possible. The well, local courts don't work. Maybe she have her hours changed or something, or schedule. Yeah. Hey guys, we're actually here at my new apartment. It's a little while before I actually move in, but um, I have the keys, so we're, we're dropping some stuff off. So I thought it might be fun to show you all a empty apartment tour so you can see it before I move in because it will take me some time to get situated in there and that way you can see it empty and what it looks like. <laughs> it's exciting. We're dropping off some sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's what we're doing. Sun I have sunscreen in the trunk that I just wanted to bring over here. <laughs> just we in case. We have our priorities. Alright, so it's obviously echoey in here because it's pretty empty, but it's the complete <laughs> empty new apartment tour. It's the same square footage as my other apartment which apparently is the smallest that you can get in this area. I really like small spaces because I don't like to have a lot of things and I'm just used to small spaces as a person of one. Um, but I think the layout is a lot more practical than my other apartment. I'm standing at the front door and it looks into the living room. There's like a little area here for a dining table, some overhead lighting, and uh, we also have a closet here. I don't know if you can see this. Just a little storage closet. And then let's take you into the kitchen. 
kitchen I like a lot better than my other kitchen. It's just laid out with more counter space and so it'll be easier to cook in here for me and to share fun cooking videos with you all hopefully. Um, lots of cabinet space and what I like about it in here as opposed to my other apartment is that the cabinets aren't all up super high where it's difficult to store things. They're just a lot more practical. Um, so I have a lot more cabinet storage and a place for the Kosari. I mean, the majority of my time is spent either in the kitchen or at my desk, so. I've got some new little kitchen items in here you may notice that I've never used before um, and I've kind of just been holding out to. This is, a, <laughs> I know, inspired by the, uh, inspired by Downton Abbey, but I actually bought this when I was in college at Tuesday morning. It's a Wedgwood um, China set. Um, it's very nice, so I'm going to start using it, I've decided. I bought it many years ago and my mom has been holding on to it dutifully for me all these years, so I'm finally going to start eating off of it. Um, this is just a mixing bowl that I, that I happen to have. And then look, another down Abbey inspiration. One of you all sent me this cute little brown Betty, so I'm going to start using that now that I have somewhere to display it and to use it versus that at-risk um, apartment where everything was kind of precarious and I was always worried it would fall. But yeah, that's the kitchen. And then over here you come in to the living room and you all know I don't have a TV <laughs> or care to get one. Let's just focus. So I, I purchased a desk that I'm going to put over in this area and that way I can um, have a nice view out the window here under my little balcony area. And then I'm gonna get some seating for this area here and potentially down the road a little, little dining table for there. But um, until I figure out what dining table I want, I'm just gonna make do with my little stools there at the bar um, for my, my own eating. But let's come out. I have a nice little outdoor space. If you'll recall, a big, a big thing that I wanted was a little, just a little like balcony type thing. And I have that here. So it looks out into this, um, there's like a, a nice little sitting area out there. You can go and lounge in that hammock thingy. And there's some big uh, outdoor chairs and they're fun little lights and that kind of thing. <laughs> so not that I'll ever go sit out there in the sun, but um, yeah, I'll get a fair amount of light here for having some little plants. And then I also have a storage closet out here, which is wonderful. So I can keep my Christmas tree in there. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know, those of you who have lived in Texas longer than me, how well do things hold up in those storage closets outside with the humidity? Do you put something, something in there that is safe? But yeah, that's basically the living room and then come down this little hallway and this is just the utility closet we won't bother with that but what i like is that there is the washer and dryer oh look we have a, some laundry baskets here the washer and dryer is not in the in the kitchen well i guess no it's not in the kitchen like it was before that was so annoying it's right here off the bedroom and bathroom which just makes a lot more sense and i love that it has a continuous shelf above it versus my other one had that a water cooling thing in there. It's just annoying. <laughs> um, here's my bathroom. I have a better counter space in here. And, you know, a tub and a shower and the loo. <laughs> and I have a little closet here. Storage underneath. I really don't keep I don't keep anything in my bathroom aside from like toothpaste and band-aids. There's very little that I store in my bathroom. <laughs> um, so yeah. Anyways, then this is a bedroom. Um, so my bed is probably, you can see my, my bedroom is probably going to be laid out very similar. I don't know if you can get a sense. Very similar to how it was before. I'm probably going to put the bed here just like it is in my bedroom now. And I'll probably sit in front of this window and film for you guys. So it will look very similar to how it always has. 
All right, and this is the closet. <laughs> this is my quote capsule wardrobe. This, this is all of the this is all of the clothing that I own that needs to be on hangers. I know. Um, I could probably even pare it down even further because I don't wear some of this. Um, I wear maybe about a third of it on an ongoing basis. But I just have everything all in the same color from Ann Taylor. And anytime I have to go somewhere, I just it's easy to to know what to wear. <laughs> um, I have some shoes here that I wear if I have to give a talk. I've never worn them outside, as you can see. <laughs> um, I don't like wearing high heels. <laughs> There's some sunscreen up there that will be a permanent location, but I'm hoping to take down this white shelving and um, maybe get one of those pretty pretty little things to just hang that those pieces of clothing that I have since I'm not a big hanging clothes person. That, I think that comes from having lived in a tiny apartment in New York. You just really, you really start to pare down your wardrobe to, to what you need. And here you need even less because you don't have to have a whole winter wardrobe as you do in, as you do in, um, in New York. So that's nice. But yeah, that is basically it. Um, so it will take me some time to, to get settled because I'm always slow to come around to those kinds of things. But yeah, what do you think? Oh, I love it. You like it. <laughs> I, I want to move over to this apartment complex. <laughs> I just, I have uh, FOMO, I guess. <laughs> or Green Eye Monster a little bit. Let's show them the lap pool. I have a lap I pool outside. I think this is going to be really good for you. Though. Yeah. Yeah, I have a lap pool right outside. We'll show them that. Yeah, and they can um, see the... You have this little zen garden out there? Yeah, I was showing them that. I want to try the swing. Oh, okay. <laughs> And then out here I've got a little lap pool actually um, that goes around, which is kind of cool. You can come out here and swim laps, and then in the center they have like a little barbecue grill. And that's the gym over there, which is nice. I can either access it from outside or I can go, um, and there's a door inside that you can get into the gym as well. The gym is really nice. I would take you in there, but my mom wandered off and has the fob so <laughs> oh well plus there are people working out in there and it's it's not good it's not good to film people when they're working out against their will <laughs> bad that is bad youtube youtube etiquette <laughs> my mom's gonna try the swing the hammock swing Ooh. that's cool <laughs> yeah good place to to read. <laughs> Good thing you're wearing sunscreen. <laughs> Planner madness. I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> you making some little oh, to do? I'm just playing. Oh, your zone? You do the zone cleaning thing? Yes, I try to. But it's good to just keep track of what you do like every couple months. Yeah. And if you did it or not. I know that seems a little nerdy, but it No, it no, yeah, there's something gratifying about seeing it checked off. That way everything you. gets done. Exactly. I made quite a bit of progress in my Erin Condren, but one thing um, I'll just show you, I, I don't want to show you all, like every scheduled event of my life for privacy <laughs> reasons, but one thing that I'm doing, you know, they always have, they always have these habit tracker things for drinking the water. I mean, I think you all can appreciate the fact that drinking water is a habit I have. I don't need a sticker to remind me, um, but it is a good way to establish a pattern. But I do, um, there's, there are a set of, of little administrative things I have to do every day for YouTube. And um, so I, I do all that at night before I go to bed. And I, in my um, blue sky planner, I was always writing it out every day, like do this, do that, like in a little checkbox. But I'm gonna use one of these little habit tracker stickers that um, come in those uh, Project 365 sticker books um, and see it as a whole week. And so then, you know, once I do it at night, I can just check it off and <laughs> it's, it's gratifying. Plus, it, plus the, the um, project, what is it called? Pro Me and my big ideas, project life, whatever. Mm -hmm. The color schemes match up with the Erin Condren and the stickers fit. Isn't that nice? The stickers fit well in, um, in the planner. But yeah, and then there's also, this is like a due date. I have a due date for a, 
a report I have to get in for a project I'm working on that is due that day. Um, so yeah, use that. But these are the stickers that I got at Target yesterday in the dollar spot. Some of them are a little cheesy, but a lot of them are are ones that I use. So here you can see they have the, the little checkbox thing. And this doesn't even say habit tracker, which is nice because it's not really a habit. It's just something I like to check off daily. Um, and it'll save space so I don't have to keep rewriting the same thing. And it has a lot of to-do boxes that I sort of like as well because you can put that at the top of your to-do list to mark it off. I love these little lists too. And then they also have a big one for me is email today. They had some good stuff at the uh, $3 spot. I think Target yeah, should come out with a... Good time yesterday. Target should come out with a My Neighbor, My Neighbor Totoro set of stuff in their, their dollar spot. They've got all the Disney stuff, but they need Totoro. Just saying, there is a market for it. Oh, mm -hmm. this is my little wallet thing that I use, that I got in my FabFitFun box. I am using it, by the way. It has my Costco card, my um, credit card, and my um, Kroger <laughs> coupon card. So I was just booking some travel for the summer and so I had my credit card out and it's kind of handy to have it in there so you don't have to dig around in the purse. And these are your honeybee scissors that I'm borrowing. They're great for paper. Are yeah. they honeybee or cutter bee? It says honeybee. Oh okay. I thought they were cutter bee. X why. success. EK success. Well we're gonna have a little lunch. My mom made, made another one of your Sandwiches. Now I'm having a repeat of the sandwich I had yesterday with the hummus, fresh tomato, and spinach. Ooh, that looks good. And, and those are some of the Trader Joe's pickles. Yeah, I really like those. They're spicy. Yeah. Yeah, you like that bread. Yeah, oh, this it's, bread is my new favorite. Yeah, it's good. It's the German bread in, in a brick. Exactly. <laughs> we can't remember the name of it. We showed it in yesterday's vlog, though. So if you're wondering, it's, it's go back to the, yesterday's uh, vlog. I showed a picture of it. Yeah. Where they have, you know, the sauerkraut and things like that. Yeah. Speaking of sauerkraut, I we made myself a salad uh, with romaine, and these are some green beans um, that were actually frozen, and I just heated up in the uh, nuked in the microwave. Baby carrots some sauerkraut, fresh tomato, because it's that time of the year, and some Kirkland Signature hummus there. And, oh, we got these, um, I bought my mom some LaCroix since I always drink it when I come over here and feel guilty, so I replenished her stock, and we're trying this passion fruit flavor. It tastes just like fruit punch, you know, like, um, fruit punch in quotes, like Hawaiian punch, it tastes exactly like that. It tastes nothing like pitaya or or excuse me, it tastes nothing like passion fruit, but it tastes like fruit punch, didn't you think? Yeah. You're it drinking does. it now? It's good. You put it in a glass because you're like civilized. It yeah, I'm not gonna drink mine out of the can, but I wanted to show the can. It is, it's very good. Yeah. Bon appetit! It's not too bubbly. Yeah. Well, hey guys, what's up? I hope you enjoyed the vlog. I just uh, got back and finished up at the gym and got out of the shower. A little nighttime skincare update. So, you know, I've kind of put my CeraVe moisturizing cream on the back burner now that it's summertime, not because it's at all bad in the summer. It works fine for me, even though it's hot and it's a heavier moisturizer. It's, it, you know, it, it, to me, it's, just, it's not, a, not a big deal. Uh, but I just have some uh, moisturizers that are in kind of lighter lotion vehicles that I want to use up before summer is over, which will be a long time uh, before, before it's cold and the heaters, the heaters come on, the desiccators. I am still using, kind of every other night, the Pharmaceris um, Multi-Lipid Nourishing Face Cream that I reviewed for you all a while back. This is a great one. Thank you all for recommending it to me. Focus, focus. That white shine. Really liking this. I use this most nights prior to putting on my Tretinoin. And I also kind of alternate that every other night uh, just to kind of make my way through my fa one of my faves here, the Causerex Ultimate Nourishing Rice Overnight Spa Mask. This to me is similar to like Neutrogena Oil-Free Moisturizing Facial Lotion that I frequently rec I, I recommend to you all. 
um, as well as like CeraVe PM. Uh, this one I find uh, really does impart a brightening effect, which as I said, I attribute to the to the niacinamide. Many of you have started using it and you guys chime in that you like it. So that is great. If some, some of you out there um, who have mentioned that CeraVe stings you or bothers you, you're worried about the, the sodium hydroxide in the CeraVe PM does not concern me, but many of you have noted that the new, newer formulation with that in it is some, somewhat more irritating to you, so maybe consider this one, you know, it is quite good. Um, and then I'm also trying to dance my way through the Ultimate Moisturizing Honey Overnight Mask I reviewed for you all a while back by Causerex. I, I kind of like this one, even though it's not the most fantastic thing. Um, I actually put this onto a wet face, and then I will seal it in with one of these two, the Pharmaceras or the, or the uh, Moisturizing Overnight Spa Mask. Just because um, you know it's kind of it's kind of a clear, almost thick humectant. I mean, it's it's pretty occlusive on its own. It's kind of semi-occlusive gel type consistency. This um, is fine. I do see you know a little bit of plumping. It's fragrance free, by the way. I'm just sniffing my hand for some unknown reason. <laughs> uh, but this, um, I'm, I'm less enthusiastic about this just because it has propolis in it. Propolis is one of those bugaboos that really can can give people problems as far as allergic contact dermatitis that and fragrance are you know kind of common common ingredients in skincare products personal care use products that cause problems so this is one that i wouldn't recommend to people with you know fragrance allergies or sensitive skin just because of that possibility i wouldn't recommend it in the setting of like excessive irritation and peeling from from tretinoin, your skin is really kind of susceptible then. I'm out of the woods for, for me, I'm out of the woods in, in terms of that period. That that really never occurred excessively for me. I had a little bit of peeling, but not, not much um, in the beginning. Uh, but you know, my background, skin, skincare habits were, were more, as, I'm, as I elaborated in other videos, were more kind of set up to handle it. So it wasn't, it wasn't as problematic for me, but this, um, you know, this I would not recommend in that setting, but otherwise it's okay. I mean, it's fine to put on under, under a moisturizer here and there. Um, by itself, I haven't really tried it too much by itself, um, to be a frank, but I, uh, I have to say, Causerx, the products that I've tried, I've liked, I've liked many of them. I don't like the Galactomyces, Galactomyces whitening, whitening assets. I didn't care for that, and I didn't care for the Asol, the Asol either. But um, many of you use their, um, they have a, a BHA face wash that many of you use, um, but it has a very low percentage strength of, B, of salicylic acid in it. Uh, but many of you like that one, so that's good. And then the, the other product that I'm motivated to try, they have a polyhydroxy acid uh, moisturizing cream that I'm motivated to try, if you'll recall from my alpha hydroxy acid video. Polyhydroxy acids are sort of a derivative of alpha hydroxy acids that exfoliate much more superficially and are very, very gentle and simultaneously very moisturizing of the kind of acid exfoliant things. That is the one that is potentially the best, say, like the, the lowest risk for people with sensitive skin, rosacea. So I'm kind of motivated to try that. It's in a nice moisturizing cream vehicle. Uh, and then oh, many of you have asked about the snail one. So there's an overnight snail mask. I may give that a try as well. Um, it sounds like a good one. And um, I don't know if they have any of these funny essences or whatever, but I'm not super motivated to do those. Um, I just don't think they work for me very well. I'm not impressed with them as a vehicle. They don't make a lot of logical sense. Ignore the whole 20 step thing, or 10 step, five step, two, just ignore that. That is not a real thing, I'm sorry. That is a marketing thing. That's not a real Korean skincare thing. Uh, you know, Korean women that have beautiful skin likely have it because of sun protective behaviors, as I've said on here before, not not some 30 step regimen. I mean, that is, that is a gimmick for sure. Uh, but anyways, guys. Yeah, I'm kind of sagging back into a little K-beauty, so I hope you guys uh, guys enjoy those reviews. But if you like this vlog, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.